What's up, Covalence friends? Welcome back to part two of our Email by API series, where today we're going to be going through actually writing the code we need to send emails with SendGrid. Now, I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's get right into it. All right, so we're starting off on SendGrid's website here. And I've actually already created an account. It kind of takes you through this whole two-factor auth setup. That's mandatory, it's a little annoying, but once you get through, you'll actually be taken to this dashboard, which is where we're beginning today. Now again, Twilio actually owns SendGrid, which is one of the major reasons why I love SendGrid or using SendGrid in particular. Uh, they have this new Twilio SMS integration in a sense where it kind of lets you start texting people for free. Awesome, I think it's gonna be a great future video. I will definitely be releasing that in the upcoming weeks, but for today, we are working on emails. Now, before we can send a single email, we actually have to create a sender identity. Now the sender identity is basically the from address that is going to be used to, you know, send emails out to people when they receive it. This is going to be the address that they receive it from. So we're going to need to create an identity and the identity is going to need a from name. So we're going to use covalence, the from email address. Now this would be your email address or your company's email address, but we're going to use a temporary email address today. And so we're also going to reply to that using that. And so the company address you'd actually put in here, um, you know, we're just going to use a address in Birmingham. In the United States and the nickname, we're just going to call it Maine. Now you could have as many of these like, sender addresses as you want, or at least you can have a lot of them. And the nickname would basically just be a way for you to kind of see easily which uh, sender address this is. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create this. We're gonna close this and it actually sends an email to this address. So you can see that it's not verified yet. We have our nickname main and we're gonna need to actually verify this email address before we can send anything from it. So I'm gonna go to my temp email address here. We can see we actually got the email from SendGrid and we're going to go ahead and we're going to click that verify sender. So if everything goes according to plan, we will get that sender verified and bam, we have the check mark. We can now start sending emails from this address. So we are going to go ahead and start coding. All right, now let's drop down this and get into our VS code. Now, I'm actually gonna be using a template um, that is actually a Next template created by us at Covalence. And if you've never used Next.js, I highly recommend you check it out. I have plenty of videos on it, so go back, take a look at some of our previous videos using Next. But basically, it's kind of like a full-on uh, app already built out for you. It uses TypeScript, and it has an API with some pages and things like that. Now, we're gonna be actually using this API to create an endpoint that allows us to send an email. So we have a page set up, our index.tsx, and it just says, hello world, you know, from Covalence. And so this is basically our home here. And what we're going to do, it actually uses Tailwind already as well. So it's a lot of like pre-built, pre-stuff in here that's already laid out and pretty awesome, right? We even have a couple components, like a layout component um, that handles a lot of your titles, things like that. Now. Again, there's plenty of videos on the actual template itself. We're not gonna worry about that too much right now. So what we're going to start doing is we're gonna start coding this endpoint. Now, we're going to actually need SendGrid's NPM package. So I'm using yarn, so I'm going to yarn install. It's going to be at SendGrid slash mail, and we're going to save this. So let's go ahead. Um, oh, it's not install, it's add. Sorry, I get confused with yarn and npm all the time, yarn add, sendgrid slash mail. It's going to link my dependencies and it's going to save them. We can just go into our package.json real quick just to make sure. And we can see sendgrid mail is in here. And so we now can start actually coding this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop open our API and we're going to get our hello.ts here. And we're going to basically say that our hello.ts is you know, this handler here, and you can name whatever you want in here. If you wanted it to be mail.ts, you could say mail.ts, right? I'm gonna use the hello just because it's already in here and um, you could change it, but this is basically gonna be the actual endpoint. So it's gonna be forward slash API forward slash hello is going to be the endpoint. If you made a mail.ts, it would be forward slash API forward slash mail, right? And so we're going to use the hello and uh, let's see. So. We need to actually import SendGrid from the package. So we're going to import SendGrid. 
from sendgrid slash mail. Let's go ahead and use single. I don't know why I did double, but we have actual native TypeScript in here, which is really nice. And we have TypeScript support already built in, so we don't actually need anything from at types. Um, now we need our actual API key, right? And so what you can actually do here is, you know, normally you'd actually have your API key probably in your environment barrel. So it'd be something like process.env dot, you know, send grid key, you know, or what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually just grab that key real quick. So let's go ahead and pop this back open. And you're gonna need to go to, let's see if I can find this. Uh, let's see, settings maybe, let's see, API keys, there we go. So we actually have to generate an API key. So we can create API key. We can actually give it a name here. So we're just, again, we're gonna call it main. And for, we can actually restrict access. So for our use case, we're going to go ahead and allow full access because this is our server. Um, but if you needed to you kind of restrict this and only allow for certain parts, you could actually create a restricted key, which is again, a really nice feature of SendGrid. But we are going to create and view it. And once we see it, it's gone. So we need to make sure we copy it. Once we click done, this key is no longer able to be seen. So it is permanently hidden and we have to make sure that if we lose this key we actually have to destroy it and create a new one which could be a pain in the butt because you might have to start updating all of your applications right all right so we are going to go ahead and we're going to plug it in here now again i'm going to delete this key so don't try and use it um, but we now have our api key and we are going to now call sendgrid.set api key and it's going to be this api key variable that we've just created right whoa don't know what happened there. All right, so we have this kind of like data. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about this. This is just a type. We could just change this and we'll say, you know, something like success Boolean. And then we're going to send back success true if we actually get a successful response. Now, in this handler, the way next works is you actually get all of the um, requests through the same handler for this API. So you actually have to do a little bit of parsing, but what we're gonna say is if we actually get a post request to this endpoint, then we actually know that, you know, this is going to be a, um, you know, a request to actually get this email, right? And so we're, in the case of a post, we're going to send back a 200, um, now in the case of anything else, let's just say res.status 404. So we're just going to go ahead and just send status 404 and basically route not found, right? So otherwise, if we're actually getting a post, we're gonna send the 200 and we're going to return, right? Because we don't wanna actually send two responses. Um, and you could even just send back an empty object if you want, right? So, oh, it needs success false, so. There we go. So we'll send back something that says success false and 404. All right, so inside of our post request though, what we can actually do is we can actually grab the body, say it's going to be request.body, and we'll just kind of default it to be an object. Um, and then from in here, we could kind of parse the keys out, all that, right? But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of use a subject line and some text, right? And so for our case, um, we are going to basically have kind of like an intro, a body, and let's just say that's it. Let's just say an intro and a body. So we could have something along the lines of, you know, const intro equals body.intro, you know, or let's just say empty string and const, const content equals body. We'll just call it content or empty string, right? And basically what we wanna do is we're going to try catch this response. And if we get something kind of failed, then we actually want to send back a 500 response. And we could actually send back the error itself, or we could just say success false. Um, but otherwise we're going to send back the 200 response, right? So inside of here is where we're actually going to await 
send grid dot send and then this is the actual ob body as we get or the object body right and so the two is going to be the email address that we send it to so let's just say we're actually going to send it in the actual body itself so why don't we say body dot two um, and if this isn't right then we'll get an error obviously uh, the from is our actual from address so we have our name all right we're going to send it from covalence and our email is going to be oh well it's going to be the actual email address that i need to now grab from here so let's go ahead go back to our dashboard here um let's see i need to get back to our sending capabilities let's see senders come on website load a little quicker all right here we go we need that email address all right so that's going to be the email address it's coming from and we're going to have our subject which is going to be our let's just say body dot subject or we'll just say email and then finally we're going to have text content and we're going to have HTML content, right? All right, and we have to actually change this function to be an async function, and we should be good to go then, right? All right, so we have basically everything we need except we need to actually create this email. Now, for text, it could just be intro pipe content, right? You could just basically put that in there. If you're sending an administrative email, you could just only send a text email but we have the capability to send a nice looking email, right? Now, HTML is a full on HTML document. So you could write your own HTML, pass it in and have it, you know, look really neat. Could be something like a receipt, something along those lines, um, could be really interactive and all that, right? And so we want to make sure that the email matches the needs of whatever that email is for. So for our particular case, um, I could go ahead, let's, I'll show you like a, a mail generator too, why not? So we're gonna, we're gonna add another package here, we're gonna add mail gen, and I think it has types. So let's just try at type slash mail gen. All right, and so we're actually going to create a little mail gen, um, mail generator, I guess you could say. And I haven't actually used MailGen in a while, so let's go ahead and just pull up MailGen real quick and see how to use it. Let's see. So this is basically kind of what it creates. It kind of creates this nice little template, templated out email with a potential link if we need to go somewhere. Um, so we can actually import MailGen here. So it's going to basically just be MailGen and then we can actually new it up with a theme and a product and that's going to basically be our product here so let's go ahead and do that real quick so we're going to import mail gen from mail gen and we're going to new it up so we're going to say const mail gen equals new mail gen and in here we can have our product which has a name we'll call it covalence and what else did it have let's see a link so let's make sure we put our link in there uh, we'll say HTTPS covalence dot IO all right it does not like it let's see theme it needs the theme so we're gonna call default theme all right and now it's happy all right so we have our mail generator and what we can actually do now is we can actually create const email equals and it's going to be the actual email that we're going to pass in to this mail generator so we can actually see that it has a body and the body contains name intro action so let's go ahead and just do that so we're going to say body And the name is going to be who we're actually sending it to. So let's just say um, customer, right? And the, actually, what was it? Name, my memory's going. Intro, action, outro, all right? So we have basically the intro and the outro. Um, let's go ahead and just use the intro we have in here. Actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just have our intro and our content. So 
for intro, it's going to be intro. And then for outro, it's going to be content. And we're not going to have an action. This is just going to be essentially some sort of intro, some sort of content to the email. And that's going to be our whole email. Now, when we want to generate this text, what we can do is we can pass this email in. So what we're going to do is we're going to call mailgen dot generate plain text, and that's going to create your text uh, email, right? And so that's going to pass in email here. And then for HTML, it's actually just the mailgen dot generate. And we're going to pass in the exact same body. All right. And so we've actually generated both our HTML template and our text template as well. So everything looks pretty good. We need to make sure that we on the front end, we're sending through an intro, we're sending through content, we could actually send through the name if we want as well. Um, if you know, you had an actual name that was passed into a form. So let's go ahead and actually do that. Let's just say, you know, body dot name or customer. So we can pass up name if we need to. Um, and then as well, we're going to be passing up this to value. Um, or, you know, you could even, well, most likely you're going to make sure that that's in there. You could even check ahead of time if body dot two exists. Uh, but that's basically who we're going to be sending it to. And we're probably going to, we're going to send it to ourselves because we can, and we're going to send it to the exact same email address. So we're going to make sure that we have this for future use and we're going to pass up a subject as well. So let's go ahead and we're going to jump into our main page here. And we're going to just add essentially another little section here, or let's just add another div here. So we're going to say, you know, div dot py 10 again. So we're going to add a little bit of a, of a, you know, padding in the Y direction. And in this, we're going to create a button. And this button is going to say send. Now we could have a whole form. I'm not going to go through generating the entire form. Um, we're just going to kind of send values as if it was in a form. Um, but we're going to say, you know, on click and we're going to have a function in here and this function is going to be an async function and it's going to actually send this thing. And so we are going to await a fetch request and it is going to be to slash API slash hello. And we're going to make sure that we have a method as post and our body is going to be, you know, JSON stringify this data that we're going to pass in. And we also need to make sure that we actually have headers in here, like content type application JSON. All right. So I believe this should be everything we need to actually successfully send a fetch request, at least hopefully. And uh, we're going to make sure that we actually get this back as well. So let's go ahead and we're going to try catch this real quick. Again, we're kind of we're kind of skipping a little bit of stuff or at least going kind of quick on this front end. Um, const r equals and then we could say that const res equals r dot json or await r dot json. And we can say if res dot success you know, we'll alert email sent, right? Otherwise, else we want to throw new error. And we're going to alert in here. Email fit oh, email filed. Oh, email F failed. Jeez, I'm having typing problems today. All right, email failed, right? So all right, so we should be able to run this and we need to actually pass up some values here. So for the two Oh, I copied that and then I recopied something else. So let's go ahead and make sure we copy this value again. We're going to send it to that same value. So body dot two, we can put a name in here. We can say, uh, why not Johnny Appleseed? I think that was the example. So the name's going to be Johnny Appleseed. See the two is going to be the temp email address. The subject line is going to be, um, click me. Why not? spammy enough. All right. And what else did we have in here? We had subject intro and content, right? So we have intro and content. Let's say intro, you know, let's just say welcome to covalence and content. We're going to just say, you know, lorem ipsum passive 
I don't know, aggressive, all spelled wrong. <laughs> um, I have no imagination. All right. Lorem Ipsum, passive aggressive, I have no imagination. Perfect. All right. Let's actually spell some things correctly too. All right. Perfect. All right. So if we did everything correctly, we should be able to send this out. Um, let's see. Let's do text center here too, just so we get that button in the middle. And we should be able to actually have something. So let's just see what happens. We may need to fix something, but let's just go ahead and run this real quick. We started our server and let's pop open and go to localhost 3000. We have a button here. Let's go ahead and just pop open our dev tools just to see what happens. We're gonna go ahead and click send, email sent. So we actually successfully sent something, which is a good start. We can actually check and make sure that the payload looks good and it does. We have content intro name subject to. And if we go to our temporary email, we did get an email from Covalence. Click me, that looks pretty good. Let's click it. Don't ever click an email that says click me. All right, and we say, hey, look at that. Look, we have our link in here. We have our company with it, which actually has the link attached to it. Hi, Johnny Appleseed, welcome to Covalence. Lauren Mipson, Pastor Gross, I have no imagination. Yours truly, Covalence. So we sent a little email. It even had a little bit of styling. It used the HTML, obviously. Um, we should be able to actually see uh, the plain text in some email browsers or some email clients. Now, of course, we're using this uh, temporary email address, so we probably, they might have a way to do it, but I'm not gonna get into it really. Let's see, source, oh, it actually downloads it. So again, don't worry about that too much. Everything looks good though, and we have SendGrid sending emails. All right, so I hope that made sense, and I hope it was easy enough to understand. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Now, again, this was about as basic as you can get with sending emails with SendGrid. There's a ton of additional functionality. There are templates, dynamic templates. There are all sorts of really cool things that you can get into. There's even automation workflows and things like that. And so in terms of allowing it to grow with your business, I think there's plenty of room for it to grow with your business. And you can pretty much continue to use this all the way until you're getting you know, Series A, Series B funding for your corporation, right? So hopefully you guys like SendGrid, and if you don't, feel free to let us know why in the comments below. We're going to continue with the additional parts of this series moving forward. We got Mailgun and MailChimp coming up, and so base, or definitely make sure that you tune in for those. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out our community membership. It is the most amazing deal we have ever done like as a company, it basically have all complete access to all of our courses uh, for the low, low price of 25 bucks a month. That link is in the description below as well. So we hope to see you back soon. We hope to see you in our Discord community server. And until then, I guess just get out of here.